Good morning. Today the Christian holiday is the second Sunday after Epiphany, but we're celebrating today as Concordia Sunday because we have a speaker from Concordia University, Macmahon, Dr. Roy Peterson there. He'll be sharing a message with us today. The first hymn in With the Lord Begin Your Task, it's number 869. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There's no speech, no other words, whose voice is not heard. Their measuring line goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son, Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the baptism of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. 
He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a faintly burning wick he, no, he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice on the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God the Father, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of our Lord. The epistle comes from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin and grace may abound? By no means. How can you, how can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? He was buried therefore with him by baptism into death in that order just as Christ is raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin for one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be God. Should we stand? Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? 
And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Our next hymn is 801, How Great Thou Art.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen and living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word to us today comes to us from the book of Psalms, chapter 25, verses 4 and 5, where we read, Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. This is God's word to us today. Well, on behalf of our president at Concordia University, Wisconsin, Ann and Arbor, uh, Dr. Eric Ankerberg, our faculty, staff, and more than 6,000 students, I bring you greetings this morning. It's uh, good to be with you again and, and share with you as one of our ministry partners God's word and more specifically our theme for this year, Guided by God, taken from the passage I just read to you. Before we get into the passage, though, I'd like you to think back. Think back to a summer vacation some years ago. Might have been when you were growing up. Might have been when your kids were younger. For a lot of families, that summer vacation was often a road trip where you'd load up the car or the minivan or even the station wagon. Anybody remember going on a family vacation in the old station wagon? I do too. Yep, back seat, looking backwards. A little bit different back then. One part of that vacation that was a staple for most families, of course, was this, the Rand McNally Road, Alice. Any of you remember having that in your car or vehicle? You bet. Yeah, many of us did. And uh, as you can see, they still print these. This is the 2023 edition, so there are still people who use this, and they're awesome. You know, you can open it up, and every state is in here, and all the major highways, so you should be able to go right to it and figure out where you're going, and it takes you right there, right? Yeah, usually. <laughs> we all know that by the time this hits the printing press, it's out of date. Things change. Roads change. It's not perfect. It's good, but not perfect. But thankfully, it's been replaced by this. Most people today have one of these, right? A smartphone, and they might have some type of map on it, like Google Maps or some other mapping service. And how these have changed things. In fact, I used it just this morning again while I've been here before. I always like to make sure I know that I'm getting off at the right ramp and that I, what time I'm going to get there. So I, I plug it in and, and it takes you right there. And these, of course, these modern mapping services that guide you to where you have to go, they're perfect, right? <laughs> no, not so much. I remember a time I was visiting a family up in uh, the Antigo area. And uh, by the time I was ready to leave, it had gotten uh, nighttime already, dark. But I plugged in my home and uh, hit go and, and started following the directions. But I thought, boy, this is, these are odd direct, this is an odd way to go. And I knew it was leading me astray when it wanted me to turn onto a farm lane with a gate across it. Sure sign that that was trouble. Anyway, I ended up getting back on the, right, on the right road soon enough. Good, but not perfect. When we're looking for direction, though, we want to be sure, don't we? We want to be confident that the path that's laid out for us, the way that we're being guided, is going to be sure and true and get us to where we want to go. Well, it's not this. It's not even this. But there is a source that guides us in life. Sort of the big questions of life that gets us where we hope to go. And that's God's word. Unlike the Atlas, unlike Google Maps, it never changes. And it's always certain, always true. Because the one who inspired that word of God is himself true. And most importantly, loves you and wants to do what's best for you and take you the way that you should go. And that takes us to our text for today. 
Our text today calls out to God to be that guide, to give that direction, to show the way that we are to go. And it's those two verses in particular that serve as the theme this year at Concordia University, Wisconsin and Ann Arbor. Now, it's important to recognize, too, that that theme was not chosen by our president, wasn't chosen by the faculty, even the theology department. Instead, every year, it's students that select the theme for the coming year. And it's amazing, or interesting to me at least, how God works through those students to pick that word of his that really speaks to them in their season of life. You see, young people are looking for direction. And while many of them know that they want, want to receive higher education, specifically Lutheran higher education, and they may even know that they want to be a nurse, or a physician assistant, or, or an accountant, or a pastor, or teacher. They have over 70 different options to choose from. Many of them change their mind along the way. When they come to us, they're still looking for direction. And where we point them is to God's word, to seek his will, his guidance for them. As we look at this text, it's important to recognize, though, that it doesn't start out by saying, by the way, this is for college students. This is for all of us, all of God's people, all of you, no matter what your age, no matter what your season of life. pastor once uh, told me, uh, a more senior pastor said, shared this phrase, if you're not dead, you're not done. If you're not dead, you're not done. So many people, as they get a little more senior, think that, you know, I've done what I'm here to do for the church and for the kingdom, and, and uh, I'm just going to enjoy the rest of life here until God calls me home. That's not God's plan. God has a purpose for every single one of us, regardless of our age, whether college students or younger or working and older. God is here to guide you. And this text points us to that. Well, let's understand this text to better grasp what's happening here. We should step back and look at the entire psalm. It's a psalm of David. And most scholars would suggest that it was written later in life. And we know a lot about David, that great king of Israel, probably the greatest king that Israel ever was served by. One who is called a man after God's own heart. That shepherd king who would be the ancestor of the Christ himself. The one who is blessed in so many ways but one who also was not perfect, one who was a sinner, just like us. And because of his position, his sins were often quite great and quite well known. He was also a man who didn't necessarily do the best with managing his own household. One of his sons, you're probably familiar with, Absalom, a handsome man, but one with great ambition. So much ambition, in fact, that he coveted his father's throne and led a coup that forced the great King David later in his life to flee Jerusalem so that he wouldn't be killed by his own son hiding away, waiting to see how it would play out. Many scholars suggest that that's when David wrote this psalm, wondering, what now, God? You've blessed me in so many ways, but now it seems my world is falling apart. I've had to flee. My son is out to kill me. 
And you think you've had a bad day some days. Imagine David in that hard place of life. So David writes this psalm where he cries out to God, calling on God, knowing that it's God who he can trust. Oh, that we would always do the same through all the hard times of life. But notice the words that David starts with. David first acknowledges who he really is and his position. He acknowledges his sin and need for mercy and forgiveness. Hear these words. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. A few verses later. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. And a little later, relieve the troubles of my heart. Free me from my anguish. Look at my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. David was laying before God the truth of who he is. He was a sinner. He didn't deserve what God could give. But yet he was bold enough to ask for it. Just like we do. You've noticed, I'm sure, what do we put right at the beginning of our liturgy, right at the beginning of the service each week? A call to confession. Where we speak those words. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we've done and by what we've left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. And because of that, we justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. Are they just words that we say or do we recognize how true they are? David knew who he was. And he threw himself at the mercy of God, as do we. But as we also hear, as those words are spoken by your pastor, those words of forgiveness, as John wrote, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And so, too, David knew that God would forgive Hear these words then of David. If you, Lord my God, I, in you I put my trust, I trust in you. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. I take refuge in you. My integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope, Lord, is in you. David was a loved child of God. And so are you. God loves you enough to send his son to die for you. And because of that, your sins are forgiven. And now as a forgiven child of God, what's next? You have a life to live as that free child of God. And so did David. And so he asked the words of our theme. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth. And teach me, for you are God my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. Life can be hard some days. It's challenging for college students doesn't get any easier. Where is your hope? David points it out. Our hope is in you, my God, for you are my Savior, and in you I trust. Show me your ways. Well, when our students ask that question, they may be wondering, what is the path that God is setting before me? You might ask, what is before me? Our students are called upon to seek that path that God is laying out. One of the paths that we pray that they will take and that we encourage is to consider working within God's house as a professional church worker, raising up teachers 
pastors, musicians, directors of Christian education or church ministries, and, and on and on it goes. And is there ever a need for that? Some of you may have also received the recent issue of uh, Lutheran Witness. If you haven't looked, at, looked through it yet, I'd call your attention. There's an article near the end titled, Pray the Lord of the Harvest. And it shares some really interesting information about the, the number of pastors and teachers that are in need. It says that in 2022, we had 5,700 pastors in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Over the next several decades, over the next few decades, that number is going to decline by some 2,000. Right now, we need 220 pastors graduating from our seminaries each year just to keep things where they are and keep in mind that there are a couple hundred vacancies right now. So the fact that you have a pastor, give thanks to God. We need 220 a year. This year, how many entered our seminaries? 81. Well less than half of the need. Our schools across the country, we have Lutheran schools all over the country. It's second largest, second largest parochial school system in the country. But nationwide, less than half of the teachers in those schools are LCMS rostered, less than half. And it goes on, and there's more to say, but I'd bring that to your attention. Well, at Concordia University, Wisconsin, we're certainly doing what we can to help fill that gap. In fact, over half, over half of the pre-seminary students, of the students that go on to the seminary, come from Concordia, Wisconsin, Ann Arbor, out of our entire system, just over half from your Concordia. But we're also providing more teachers than any other Concordia. But there's more to do. As good as our admissions people are in helping to encourage young people into these careers and fields, it has to start right here. It starts in your congregation. It starts in your family. As you look at the young people in your congregation, whatever their age, and it's not too, never too early to start, plant that seed. Offer that word of encouragement. You know when, what age I was when I first started being told I should be a pastor someday? Six. And you know who told me? Grandma. <laughs> so when grandma talks, you got to pay attention, right? Encourage. Invite. Bring them down to see the campus. It has to start right here. It's important for you to know as well that students in our church work field receive more financial aid than any other vocation they may choose. It's really important, and we couldn't do it without all of you. So we're thankful for that, and it does help us fulfill that need. I started out by talking about vacation, roadmaps, guides, how are those young people going to be guided? Guided by God's word. How are you going to be guided? By God's word. He is our savior. He brings us forgiveness. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. For you are my God, my savior. My hope is in you all day long. Amen.
And the peace of God behind your understanding and ours, keep your hearts and minds in that faith unto life eternal. Amen. We stand and say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the conscious pilot, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand Come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life of Christ. Amen. We pray. Heavenly Father, we ask for blessings upon the entire Lutheran school system from nursery school to schools like ours to schools like. Uh, Mequon and Ann Arbor. Uh, grant that young men see the need to become pastors and feel in their hearts that they should be. Uh, grant that both young men and young women see the need for teachers and, and fulfill that role. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask for a cessation of hostilities in Ukraine. Bless all the Christians there who are struggling to even meet and to receive funds. Um, it seems an impossible situation, but with you, Lord, all things are possible. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our sick, Hope, Sylvia, Levi, Judy, Robert, Pat, Reverend Jerry, Christopher, Lori, Bill, Lois, Karen, we ask for healing and, and help in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will We pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for the announcements. I got the district newsletter this week and it's not just a couple hundred churches that don't have pastors, it's over 500. So, uh, by the latest report. Now, some of those, our vacancies are for assistant pastors, but most of them are for sole pastors. So, uh, the need is great. Uh, we welcome Dr. Roy Peterson, our guest speaker today. Thank you for talking to us about Concordia, uh, Concordia Sunday. Uh, our winter warm-up meals are being served on Tuesdays in January, February, and March from 11.30 to 1.00. Uh, flyers are on the Welcome Center for anyone interested, either for the meal or for volunteering. 
We can use help of all kinds for this worthy endeavor. Um, if you are free on Tuesday from 11.30 to 1, feel free to come just to eat the soup. <laughs> we have plenty of soup. And it will make it feel like there's more people there, because there will be more people there if you're there. So uh, we have enough soup for this week, but um, we'll keep watching the volunteer board for that to see when opportunities arrive for making soup. Uh, the LWOL meets Monday, January 16th at 12.30. All women are welcome. Uh, that's a very small group. They could use some new members. And the Dorcas Circle will meet Wednesday, January 18th at 1 p.m. Uh, they also, they're bigger, but they're shrinking. So if you can think about joining them, that would be great. Um, one of my jokes is when God calls, he calls collect. <laughs> so, um, you, you, you don't choose to be a pastor, God chooses you to be a pastor. Uh, closing hymn is, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, number 702. <laughs>